Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I have a question for you as I start many episodes with a question. Would, how would you feel if we told you that you could sleep better, feel better, have more energy, not feel as tired, not feel as sluggish, have better focus, be more clear-headed, clear-thinking? Well, we're going to provide the answers as to how you can do that today when I talked with Taylor Wessel. Taylor is just a wealth of information. She's a nutritionist, and she's going to guide us on how we can either avoid or treat adrenal fatigue naturally. Without further ado, Taylor, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm happy that you're here. And I love to talk all things health and wellness. I think our minds and bodies are so miraculous and to learn more about how just the miraculous nature of foods and you know how God created the world so that we're all like so interwoven and everything comes together full circle for our good and for our health. I love to talk about this stuff and so I am really happy that we're having this conversation. I think as the days get shorter and we approach, you know, the the winter season when it people do tend to have more heavy feelings, I think this will be and the bodies kind of take on so much more stress with the holiday season and just winter in general, I think, and the pressures of the end of the year goals and trying to achieve everything before the end of the year. I think it's a perfect time to have this conversation. And I think it's going to help a lot of people navigate this without getting burnt out or having their bodies shut down. So before we dive into all of this juicy goodness, will you tell everyone how you got to this point in your journey? Yes, yes. Um, so I specialize in working with women who are going through burnout, adrenal fatigue, and hypothyroidism, which really brings us to this very niche down topic. And like many healthcare practitioners and coaches, we most often have our own personal journey and story that brought us to a place where we've educated ourselves for our own health, but then feel so empowered when we get to a better place to help other people who are struggling. So with that being said, my story started about 2010, I would say. Um, I had been on birth control pills for about eight to 10 years, as many women are. And I started hearing from a lot of my girlfriends that they had gone off birth control pills. It was like night and day different as far as their mood. They were kind of just not feeling like themselves at that time. And kind of just the cloud had lifted once they removed birth control pills. I was already naturalistic minded, didn't love taking things anyway. So I thought, what the heck? I was just going through a breakout up at that time and thought it was a good opportunity to just remove birth control pills, see how much better I could feel. In doing so, I lost my periods. I lost my cycle for actually a total of three years. And within that, um, you know, not only does the head start going crazy as a woman, you don't feel like a woman anymore when you're cycling. My body was really inflamed. I was holding on to weight. Um, I was just wondering what's wrong with me. Why isn't my body cycling? And I was trying to pull all of the natural stops. I was already very immersed in nutrition and the holistic world. So I was doing things like seed cycling and acupuncture and really looking at my diet and cleaning that up and my lifestyle. Um, and nothing, nothing was working. Still no cycles, no signs of it even. And I saw a doctor who diagnosed me with hypothyroidism. And um, at that time, I was resistant to going on any medication for thyroid. So I tried to even get more specific with some of the things that I was doing and as it pertains to supporting the thyroid. Still no period. And at this time, I was living in Colorado. 
which is very natural, like working, um, working out outside and eating really healthy, just kind of blends into the lifestyle there. Yeah. But I moved back to Chicago. I started working with a new integrative practitioner and I'm from Chicago. So this is my home base. Um, and she started talking to me about adrenal fatigue and, you know, back up just a little bit. I eventually gave in to thyroid medication because my body wasn't working. And I believe that Western medicine and medicine is there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not my go-to first approach. I try to help the body and support it and doing what it needs to do naturally. But sometimes we need that little bit of a bump or some kind of, um, help to just get us back online. But even with taking medication periods still weren't starting. So again, up to speed, I started working with this more integrated practitioner in Chicago. She spoke to me about adrenal fatigue. I started supporting my adrenals, which we can talk about. What are the adrenals? What does that even mean? And I started taking adaptogens. I started taking a really good look at the stress that I had in my life. I was working in restaurants and also studying and going through the last couple of years of holistic nutrition school. Um, and so in supporting my adrenals pretty quickly after in combination with the hypothyroid medication, my cycle started and I was cycling normally pretty fast, just, you know, our system is so interwoven and just like you mentioned at the beginning, it's like, you can't speak to one area without speaking to another. So simply targeting the thyroid wasn't helping to get my estrogen and progesterone back to where it needed to be. I needed to go downwind to my adrenals that spoke to the thyroid that spoke to my hypothalamus to get the whole system back on track. So that was my personal journey, which took me to about 2013 of getting cycles back. And then just learning a lot more along the way to take us 10 years later and just really feeling empowered now to, at my practice, tailored help, help women who are stressed to the max, who potentially are CEOs, business owners, entrepreneurs, type A perfectionists, who are going after it. They already know how to eat healthy. Maybe they're immersed in kind of diet culture. They're working out. They're kind of pushing their body, push, 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 push. And um, they're just not feeling good. And so, you know, reprioritizing, reshifting our thought process on what is healthy, because more is not always more, kind of how our society likes to think of something as healthy, um, more has to be better. And that's just not the way that it is. So we actually need to rest more and take some downtime and work on de-stressing in order to get our hormones back into a good place. Okay. That's so you said, <laughs> you said so much stuff there. So yes, one, I want to ask you this question, and then I want to dive into some of the symptoms that people can look for to yep. know that they are experiencing adrenal fatigue. So when you say that you like to try things without medication first, Mm -hmm. which let's face it, that is the best way to do because oftentimes, and listen, I'm a pharmacist, everybody, you know that. So I am not opposed to Western medicine at all. In fact, I'm a big fan of it when it's appropriate. But when we look at patients with diabetes, patients with cardiovascular disease, we, we recommend medically to, okay, let's alter diet, let's exercise unless it's the patients at the point where medication is absolutely necessary or they're going to stroke or something. But when people are pre-diabetic or, you know, just experiencing hypercholesterolemia or high blood pressure, the, the key is diet and exercise. And oftentimes you can control those diseases with diet and exercise. You can get yourself back to the, the natural state or homeostasis um, and be healthy again. But how long does that take typically? Like if you're told, okay, do like for adrenal fatigue or hypothyroidism, if you're told this is what you have, we're going to do some diet adjustments, exercise adjustments, rest adjustments. How long does that take to know if it's working, not working? Yeah. Um, great question. And here's the thing is that every 
everybody and everybody is different and responds different and responds better or worse to different naturalistic practices. So yes, there's diet. Yes, there's exercise. There's also energy work. There's also um, lifestyle things to take a look at, like stress and how are you managing it? How are you sleeping? Um, what are your relationships like? What's your headspace? So therapy is another, I mean, there's so many different facets here. Um, acupuncture, chiropractic, just getting the body back to a flow state where things aren't stuck and stagnant. Um, what they typically say with the hormones is it can take three to six months to once you start more of the naturalistic processes or start to put those into action, you should notice some shifts within that amount of time. Now that's not fast enough for the typical American who we want things fast, easy, and cheap. Um, and we start to get a little bit antsy when we're not seeing results very fast, but that is really what it takes for hormones to start to recalibrate. And you can notice that faster when you're on medication, but it can still take three months one to three right. months to start noticing changes. When you go on a thyroid medication, I actually started gaining weight when I went on a thyroid medication before I lost weight and it started to recalibrate because my body was inflamed by not being a person who took medicine and now putting this foreign substance in and my thyroid reacclimating. So what I see a lot of times is that you don't just feel better right away. You can actually feel worse. And then it's really confusing unless you're working with somebody who is educated, knows how to guide you, knows what is appropriate and an appropriate time frame. And then even better, somebody who's gone through it themselves. So they can resonate with, yeah, I was there too. And here's what worked for me or didn't. Um, not that not saying that that's going to work for everybody, but that's kind of my general rule is about three to six months for things on a natural level to start really showing that they're working. Um, and, and you can have some bumps along the way or get faster results. My goal is always to find the smallest things that we can start tweaking and the lowest hanging fruits that will give the most impact right away. Because I know, and you know, that if you start a new plan with somebody and you're not seeing results, you're just not in it the same as if you start making little shifts and it's like, oh, wow, my sugar cravings really started lifting or I started sleeping better at night. Like improvements that you didn't even know you wanted, you're more focused on weight loss, but then you start noticing these other things. And then you're like, okay, tell me more. I'm ready to keep working with you versus losing steam because you're not seeing things um, yeah. start to improve. Yeah, and that's the same thing with business coaching. I mean, people want to see results quickly and sometimes mm -hmm. it takes like an SEO strategy is going to take a little bit of time. It's not something that you see results overnight. The same thing with health. It takes time to re to re-regulate. Okay, so Taylor, let's talk first about the symptoms. How does someone know that their adrenals are not functioning properly? Yes, yes. So before I kind of go into that, I want everybody just to understand what the adrenals are, um, because I think it's just kind of, maybe you've heard of the term adrenal fatigue, maybe you haven't, but I'm, my background is integrative physiology. So I'm very much about understanding the body and how it works and how to even start to grasp, because then you have something to build off of versus like just this blanket term. So the adrenal glands are two teeny tiny little glands are about the size of a walnut or a grape, and they sit in your lower back quadrant above each of your two kidneys. And while they're teeny tiny, they have a huge job and a huge role within the body, which the primary role is to process all of the incoming stress and help the body respond to stress and stay as much at homeostasis as possible. Now, the adrenals also play a role in your immune system. So if your adrenals are overtaxed with stress, you might be the person that's constantly getting cold, flu, or any bug that's going around. Like you're, you are always taken down with that. Um, they work hand in hand with the thyroid to regulate the metabolism. 
Um, so we'll talk about some symptoms that could present there. They also play a role in digestion and so many other things, brain function. And because they're sitting anatomically on top of each of your kidneys, they help to regulate the fluids and fluid distribution throughout the body. So that is anatomically where they sit. Now that kind of bleeds into how these symptoms can start presenting when your adrenals are taxed with too much stress, right? We think of, we, we live, our modern world is very stress, mm -hmm. <laughs> stress oriented. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, we have to actively work to de-stress because our MO is stress, 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 work more, do more, you accomplish something, what's up next for you? We never sit in the pause and just be. And I'm guilty of this too. I'm not a meditator. I'm not like a, it's not super comfortable for me to sit still and do deep breathing, but that's exactly what I need to do and carve out time for. Um, but stress is not just work deadlines and traffic jams. Stress could come from your environment. It could come from the foods that you're eating. If you're eating foods like gluten or dairy that are triggering you and that you're sensitive to, it could be the products that you're putting on your skin, pollution from the environment outside, um, you know, exercise is a stress. So while exercise is so beneficial, especially for mental health and cardiovascular health, doing too much, too aggressive of workouts without rest days in between can actually push the adrenals into this fatigue state. So stress is coming from all different places. And when we are overstressed and not resting and not giving our body a chance to recover and heal, we start to notice symptoms come up. The obvious symptom is fatigue, right? Adrenal fatigue. So that is a huge red flag or just something to look into. And there's a typical pattern that I see with clients and I saw with myself. And it is the alarm clock goes off in the morning and you kind of, you're tired and you want to snooze and you want to stay in bed. And that's most people. So that's not, you know, in cluster with the other things it's important, but just something to be mindful of. Um, so you kind of drag yourself eventually, maybe after a couple snoozes out of bed, you drag yourself to the coffee pot because that's your mojo booster. And that's what you're relying on for to get the energy going for the day. You have the coffee, you kind of get yourself moving for the day. Maybe you skip breakfast because you got to get out the door. Um, you have caffeine kind of stimulating you and giving you this false sense of energy. You make it to midday and then there's that typical slump that I see around the three o'clock mark where it's like, oh, I'm dragging. Um, I'm looking for something to pick me back up and it's another cup of coffee. Maybe you've even had another cup somewhere in between there. Um, or, you know, you're at the office and there's the donuts that you've been looking at all morning, but you're trying to quote unquote be good. So you've avoided them. But now is it's like, all right, I'm just going to have one of those or maybe a couple of those. You need that sugar boost or caffeine or um, a hit of carbohydrates. So then maybe we have that and it gets us back up and going. Fast forward to later in the day, you know, there's other things in between there, but we start to get tired early and um, it's like too early to go to sleep in a typical household. Maybe it's eight o'clock and it's like, gosh, I could really shut down right now, but I'm not going to go to sleep because it's only eight o'clock and then I'll wake up so early. So we fight it, we get a second wind, and then it's like the mind can't shut down once we try to hit the hay and it's like just overactive. But we eventually fall asleep and then we tend to wake up around that one to 3 a.m. mark and it's like have to use the restroom. We go to the bathroom, we come back to bed and maybe we can fall back asleep or maybe the mind starts going, the whole list of things that we have to do tomorrow or that we have on the tap for the weekend or whatever. Um, we fall back asleep eventually, hopefully, or maybe not. And then the whole vicious cycle starts again where we're exhausted in the morning. We drag ourselves to the coffee pot because we need that kickstart and so on and so forth. Other things that can present, so that's a huge one, kind of the cycle, but 
bloating and puffiness. So I saw it underneath my eyes. I had like bags under my eyes. I tended to hold on to, I have bigger cheeks in general, but I tended to hold on to puffiness in my face. I can look back at photos and know that I was going through adrenal fatigue and my thyroid wasn't working well, just based on how my face was so full. Um, but but holding on to weight in the midsection. So I see so many women who just accept, you know, I'm just getting older, I'm going through menopause or perimenopause. And so maybe this is just how I am. I'm always exhausted. I'm always crabby. I'm having the hot flashes. And now my weight shifted from my thighs and my glutes to my midsection. Well, that to me is a huge adrenal red flag. Um, so that's another one. A craving for salty, crunchy foods is a huge one um, or sugar. So the salty, crunchy food craving is because minerals tend to be imbalanced and our jaw is a huge mechanism for processing stress. So we crave things to crunch down on as a tool for managing stress. And then so like the chip cravings tend to be here. Um, or the sugar cravings are because we're so low energy and fatigued that we're looking for those bumps to keep us going. Um, other, other kind of symptoms are the last one that I'll leave you with, even though there's kind of more that, that come up, um, is irritability, anxiety, just really quick to have that short fuse and something could tick you off really quickly. Um, and then we also just talked about the immune system piece and how you can constantly be the one that gets sick when, you know, anything is going around. You're constantly like kind of just taken out because your immune system's just always working because you don't have your adrenal support. Okay. So this is all so, so good. Yeah. So you can have adrenal fatigue without hypothyroidism. Like you could be fatigued without your thyroid being affected. Yep. So let's talk about treating. We're not going to talk about treating hypothyroidism because I think what we'll talk about is treating the adrenal fatigue. And when we talk about treating the adrenal fatigue, that will lead us to either preventing our thyroid from needing extra support, or it will treat the thyroid at the same time. Should that be the case? Now I say treat keeping in mind, everyone that every individual is going to need something specific to them. And you may or may not need a prescription for this. So we're talking holistically today, not medically and Taylor. So I just don't want anybody to hold us accountable for, <laughs> well, I tried that and now I'm in a thyroid crisis. <laughs> that's, that's not going to be the case, hopefully. But anyway, I just wanted to emphasize that this is information only. It's not, we're not telling you this is what you need to do because neither one of us have seen you or evaluated you or whatever. <laughs> yeah, good point. And really, we're trying to get on the level of prevention. And when symptoms start presenting, like, let's get in there and try to peel back some of the layers and figure out what might be going on, start experimenting. And again, like you said, Robin, everybody's different. So some of these things work, some of these don't. And we just, that's why you hire somebody like a coach or a practitioner to help you on your journey because you know your body best. And we're just educated in a lot of different areas and have a lot of different tools in our toolbox to listen to what you're saying about your body and help guide you from there based on your health history, based on blood work, based on other factors. Um, so yes, this is more in general what is helpful for adrenal fatigue. Um, so the biggest thing with adrenal fat fatigue and trying to address it on a natural level is to take inventory of the stressors in your life and take control where you can. Now, stress is inevitable, right? There are certain pieces that we have control over and certain pieces we don't. We might have kids and they have activities that they have to do and we want to provide healthy meals for them and coordinating all of that with schedules like how much wiggle room do we really have there? Maybe we can meal prep on a weekend, but maybe we can't because we're busy with other things. So there's certain stresses that that we can talk about here. And then others, it's like, we just have to do what we can around the circumference. 
one of the best ways that you have control over your adrenals, over stress in your body is to take control of your diet. Every chance that you get that's on the other side of your fork is a choice that you make to feed health or to take away from health. And I am a huge proponent. I've been in the detox, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, caffeine-free, no fun, no joy bubble for like so many years of my life. And I'm now in a place of more food freedom and I've healed and I'm able to eat more foods. But I do believe that there's there needs to be a merriment of eating for health and eating for joy based on where your health status is and where you're at in a cycle of life. So um, I just want to kind of put that out there that it's not about eating perfect. It's about eating what's right for you right now and finding joy in it. Um, but the best way to take control of health is to balance your blood sugar that we can have control over. And one of the most powerful action steps that I share with almost every single one of my clients, especially adrenally fatigued clients who are relying on that caffeine, filling up their stomach, they're probably, um, or I don't say probably, most of them are holding on to weight. So there's some kind of weight loss that they're trying to go after. And the whole intermittent fasting game is big. And many women try to go after this. And it's actually not supporting their adrenals and pushing them further down this plateau or holding on to weight or even gaining weight. And so my approach is the first action step, eat a high protein breakfast within 60 to 90 minutes of rising. Breakfast is truly the most important meal of the day. I've seen this in practice and I've seen it personally when I get the right breakfast in. I'm feeling energized, I'm feeling sustained, I'm feeling better later in the day, I sleep better at night. When I get in no breakfast or the wrong type of breakfast, that's like simple carbs, sugar, a pastry, a muffin, like that's all I have access to or that's what I wanted this morning, I crash and it's like I'm moody and the energy swings and mm -hmm. then I'm craving sugar later in the day and it's just like all cattywampus all day long. Yeah. Um, so a high protein breakfast, preferably with 20 to 30 grams of protein. And I kind of guide my clients through, here are some options for what does a high protein breakfast look like? You don't have to eat eggs if you're not an egg lover, or maybe you're sensitive to eggs. You don't have to eat a superfood smoothie if you're not a smoothie lover. There are other ways to get protein in first thing in the morning. So 20 to 30 grams of protein within 60 to 90 minutes of rising, balance your blood sugar, support your mood and energy staying balanced throughout the day. That is just number one. Um, use the right kind of salts. So there is a lot of confusion in a lot of different areas of nutrition and salt tends to be one of those along with egg yolks and cholesterol and saturated fats, but we're not even going to open that can of worms. Um, but the adrenals, because they work hand in hand with the kidneys to regulate the fluids in the body, they need to be supported with the right balance of minerals. If you're drinking all the water, you think you're staying hydrated and you're not drinking mineralized water, you're actually not absorbing your fluids. They're flushing on the outside of your body and you might be holding on to like holding on to fluids. So you might look puffy and inflamed. Simply adding a pinch of sea salt or Himalayan pink salt to your water, especially first thing in the morning, can help. It can open up the chambers of your cells so you can actually absorb the water. It helps detoxify and it will help you not run to the bathroom all the time throughout the day um, because you're drinking so much more water, which tends to have people not drink as much water as they should be because they can't afford to run to the bathroom every hour or less, um, or they just don't want to. So switch your salts over. That's a power move. It's an easy swap. Morton's table salt, not to call out brands, but that is just, it's so acidic. It's so inflammatory. And it only has two minerals versus like a Celtic sea salt. <laughs> That's weird. I don't know what's happening <laughs> to my Zoom, but um, happy birthday. Uh, 
sorry, you guys, there was a birthday balloon uh, explosion <laughs> on my computer. I guess I said something right, according to the Zoom gods. Um, but moving over to like a Himalayan pink salt, Celtic sea salt, or a real salt can provide your body with up to 87 different minerals that help to balance out so many different systems. So that's another one. The third tip that I'll share, and I'm going to share five, and I'll try to keep it tight, even though there's so much I want to say in all these different areas, um, is to reevaluate your workouts. I am working with I work mostly with women, although I do have gentlemen clients as well, and they are educated. They've already done diets. They know for the most part what healthy eating looks like. Maybe they're calorie counting or macro counting, and it's not working for them anymore. They're working out. Maybe they've even been referred to me because they are working out at a gym and they're going five to six days a week for 45 minutes to an hour, high intensity interval training, kind of that calorie scorching workouts. And yes, will your cardiovascular um, doctor, will they love you for that? And will your heart be really healthy? Yes, but your adrenals also might be too taxed by the chronic stress without the rest days in between. So really taking a look at how much are you pushing your body and do we need to incorporate some walking or yoga or stretching or rest days into your regime? Could you do less working out? I know I know that so many people would probably be like, yes, thank you. I want to hire Tate Taylor. <laughs> But I do Peloton workouts and they're 20 to 30 minutes. And that's what I can get into my schedule. I feel really good with that. I can push my body for that amount of time. And I do that about three times per week. And then I'm walking and active in everyday life. I used to be the runner who would go for like 60 to 90 minute runs. And I push my body in the max. And anyways, know where you're at on that, but reevaluate your exercise and just is it becoming an additional stressor? Do you feel like you need it to burn the calories because you're going for weight loss? Because I'm here to tell you that you don't. There's so many other ways that are softer or more gentle, especially for the women clients. Um, number four is to go to sleep earlier and when you're actually tired. So the hours before midnight, I like to say count for double as far as quality. And this comes down to hormonal balance. We are circadian rhythm beings and our body starts releasing hormones at different periods of the day. And human growth hormone starts being released, which influences our body composition and metabolism. That starts being released around 9 p.m. So we want to try to maximize on that as much as possible if we have weight loss goals. And then also if we have thyroid stuff going on, our adrenals, our adrenals are tired. They need rest and sleep cannot be underestimated. It's not a badge of honor if you only need four to five hours to function, because let me tell you, that's not true. <laughs> You're not functioning highly and optimally. And there's tons of studies out there that have looked at people getting less than six hours of sleep per night and all sorts of health issues that come up, including Alzheimer's later on in life, along with symptoms right here and now. And then the last thing is to consider supplementing correctly. And one of my favorite supplements is adaptogens. So these are a unique class of um, herbs and medicinal mushrooms that help to rebalance the body when you are out of whack. And what I love about adaptogens is that if you are somebody who's more kind of hyper wound, maybe you're prone to nervousness or anxiety or irritability, or you're just kind of like on the move and go, go, go. And um, that's your tendency. Adaptogens can calm your nervous system, help you sleep better at night, help you kind of take it down a notch and calm the overactive mind. Now, if you're the person that has the classic adrenal fatigue symptom symptoms where you're always exhausted, you're relying on caffeine to kind of get stimulated and get motivated, the same blend of adaptogens or maybe just a different blend can bring you up and provide you with the energy. Again, just trying to get the body towards that homeostasis or balance place. Now, there's a lot of different adaptogens out there like reishi mushrooms, maca, rhodiola, ginseng. 
And each different adaptogen has different properties. So kind of know what you're doing there, whether you go into a blend or do a solo adaptogen, like taking ashwagandha, which is the master regulator. Um, work with somebody before just going on a new supplement, because I think we all want the magic pill and it's just not that easy. Um, and you could be taking something that could actually be detrimental. So those are my five. Um, I'm going to let you ask questions. Or I oh my go gosh. Yeah. I mean, there's so much information here. I mean, I, it's, it is amazing to me though, the depth of the body and what we need to know and how careless we are prone to be when it comes to nurturing it. Um, because we are, like you said, hi we're hyper active, like always on the go. And I do have one question because I think you've touched on this several times, but that, that sugar craving, what mm. is the key to eliminating that sugar craving? Like if we do all of these five things that you suggested, is that sugar craving going to be diminished or will that sugar craving still be there? Yeah. Um, again, I always like to kind of preface it by everybody's different. And I'm actually working with a client right now who still has those sugar cravings, even though she's focusing on the high protein breakfast. But for 90% of my clients, the high protein breakfast and front loading calories rather than eating really good all day and then having a sneak attack later in the night where it's like you can't get enough and you're looking for the dessert and you're looking for something else. Um, balancing your, your blood sugar first thing in the morning has been so impactful for almost every single one of my clients. Um, and again, 20 to 30 grams of protein. But then from there, you need to eat small meals, if you, especially if you have adrenal fatigue, every three to four hours, again, reloading on protein and also getting in your vegetables and other healthy foods. But protein tends to be the best for stabilizing blood sugar. Now, what I'll also say is that a lot of people aren't drinking enough water and hunger and cravings can be misunderstood as you're actually dehydrated and your body's looking for energy. Hydration is energy. And so it could be seeking out things for that energy boost that it's not getting from hydration. Um, I will also say that chronic stress, it's like we're looking for something. We have to understand that food has been used um, in so many different ways for almost every single one of us from a young age. Just think about our parents who, bless them, they were doing the best that they could and I'm about to be a new parent. So like, I can't even speak on this, but I know that I'm gonna slip up at times too. But it's like when you were, um, your parents wanted you to eat your whole plate and eat your greens. It's like, if you eat your whole plate of healthy food, then you can have dessert. So we associated dessert and sweets and treats with, um, a reward, right? We did a good job. We've had a stressful day. I get to come home and I'm going to have dessert or I'm going to eat the whole, the whole cake because I can't just have one bite <laughs> because like I've been going all day. So we reward ourselves with sweets. But there's also the instance where it's like you're throwing a temper tantrum and sometimes as a parent, it's just, oh, whatever. Okay, we'll get you the ice cream or something because you know that that will soothe. So then here in this instance, you've been bad or you need um, some kind of calming and to feel different. So you were given some kind of sweet treat. So we, from a very young age, learn how to self-soothe or address emotions with things like sugar and more treaty type foods. So there's beyond just the physiology of blood sugar balance, adrenal support, hormones, and lack of sleep leading to sugar cravings. There's also this um, subconscious and unconscious programming from a young age that bleeds into later in life, which is why I'm such a proponent of like energy work and working on the body aside from doing things like therapy and coaching with a nutritionist or different practitioners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was a great answer. Can you tell us how can we get 20 to 30 grams 
of protein if we're not eating eggs in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Good question. So eggs actually, each egg provides six to seven grams of protein. So if you're eating the two eggs, you're not even hitting the seven or the um, 20 grams of protein. You need to add like black beans or you need to add a little bit of cheese if you can tolerate it. So I just wanted to put that out there that even though they're seen as a high protein food, you still need to buffer with some other protein source to actually hit that 20 grams. I love a superfood smoothie. So if you're using the right kind of protein powder, you can get 20 to even 30 grams. Now smoothies, um, can be done all wrong too. They can be a complete sugar bomb. They can go right through you. Um, so I like to add frozen fruits and vegetables, make them more spoonable than sippable, kind of top them with something that's crunchy. So you actually have to chew, which sends a different mechanism to the brain that you're actually satisfied in eating a meal. And it also slows you down versus sipping a smoothie and you could gulp it down in five to 10 minutes. I always recommend adding that protein powder, protein element, whether it's a plant-based or a collagen protein or doing hemp seeds, which is a complete plant-based protein. Um, and then adding a healthy fat component like avocado or almond butter or sunflower seed butter. I'm not a huge proponent of peanut butter, um, just due to the mold connotation. I just see a lot of people being inflamed from eating peanuts. And we even see it with our kids. There's so many allergies with peanuts that they're not even allowed in the school system. Um, so those are ways to make smoothies more sustainable is to add the, the protein, the fat, um, make them more spoonable than sippable, and always add a vegetable component while you're being mindful of how much fruit you're adding. Um, another option is if somebody can tolerate uh, dairy, doing like a Greek yogurt and topping Greek yogurt. And I recommend going for plain full fat yogurt. And then you can add a little drizzle of honey or hundred percent pure maple syrup to control the sugar versus going for honey or vanilla or fruit at the bottom, which probably has high fructose corn syrup or other added ingredients. And the full fat component, fat, it keeps us satiated. So we need to stop being in fear of fat and just know when we're eating healthy fats, that helps to shut off the signals of hunger and craving. But depending on the type of Greek yogurt that you're going for and how much you're consuming, you could hit that 20 gram mark or come close to like 12 to 15 grams and then if you top with a sprinkle of nuts or seeds and you're throwing on some berries like blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, um, raspberries, you're getting in some fiber there. Um, and then maybe a sprink sprinkle of like granola or a sprinkle of cinnamon for blood sugar balance. That's another one. And then leftovers is another thing that, you know, who said that breakfast has to be waffles or pancakes or cereal or a bagel? It, or a smoothie or eggs, it can be, I have clients that like to have salmon in the morning and they would love that to just be their breakfast. Now that's not me. I tend to gravitate more towards the smoothie or the eggs. Um, but, you know, be empowered to try different things or maybe have a mug of bone broth in the morning, which is so healing to the gut, can provide 20 grams of protein per 16 ounces and can just be so soothing and comforting, especially as we're moving into fall and then winter. It's just something to start you off on the right foot. So leftovers being salmon or chicken and veggies and maybe sweet potato or sweet potato hash, like that feels more um, nourishing in the colder months that we're kind of moving into than a smoothie is great in spring and summer and maybe early fall. Working with the seasons as much as we are working with these different like numbers and patterns is we have to rotate things and be aligned with the season of life that we're in and then also the seasonal elements um, coming into play. Oh my gosh, Taylor, you have given us <laughs> so much information. I'm going to ask, I want a, just a really fast, really fast yep. answer in yep. a number. How many grams of protein should we be eating a day in total? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I would recommend that most people 75 to 100 grams of protein, again, depends on like health status and where you're at. If you are somebody who's God forbid going through cancer, you want to flood your body with antioxidants and more of a plant based approach. So you don't want to have any or as much animal protein, and then it becomes hard to eat that much um, protein at that period of time. But I would say most people, 75 to 100 grams of protein. I also see a lot of people eating way too much protein, right? Because it is the first thing that a personal trainer will tell you when you're trying to lose weight, change your body composition, well, just eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And that I actually worked with a linebacker who was 260 pounds. He was eating 260 grams of protein per day. And he had, um, he had stuff going on with his colon. I can't remember if it was IBD, but it's like, that is not healthy for you. So we have to kind of know where we're at and think about the other organs, like the kidneys, then that get taxed from processing all of that protein. So that's my answer. Okay. All yeah. right. How can the listeners connect with you, learn more from you? Yes. Um, my website is tailored health number four, you.com. Um, that's a great way to check me out, uh, learn a little bit more about me and then find my social channels. You can reach out to me there um, and send me an inquiry or book a free discovery call or an initial consultation. I am also on Instagram at tailored, E-D, T-A-Y-L-O-R-E-D underscore health underscore. And I'm sharing a lot of different videos and actionable items. My whole approach is just helping as many people as possible really simplify this. I am not the, the no pain, no gain nutritionist. I am more about like we are all busy not all of us like to spend time in the kitchen. Some of us don't even like to cook. And so how can we still support you with small actionable steps like drinking water before having your coffee in the morning or getting in an easy high protein breakfast or taking a 10 minute walk midday just to reset your brain. Um, So those types of things will be on Instagram, just small, quick, actionable items. But I do a 15 minute free discovery call which is on my website, tailoredhealthforyou.com. And that's a great touch point if you're interested in coaching, if you feel like, gosh, I I resonated with so many of these symptoms today. And I just want to see if this is a fit for me. I want to meet Taylor. Um, That would be a great starting place for us. And no commitment. But if you feel like coaching is a fit, and if I feel like I can help you, we can kind of discuss it from there. Thanks for asking. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Listeners, you know what I'm going to say. If you found this information helpful, please share it with a friend who will also find it helpful. There are so many people who need to improve their health out there. And it's hard. It's really hard to stay healthy and to be diligent with taking care of ourselves in the society that we live in. So if you know someone who could really use this information, please share it. And if you feel like Taylor would be a good fit for you, please reach out to her as well. Thank you for being here, Taylor. It was an honor to have you. And I appreciate you sharing such a wealth of information with us. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, listeners.